All right, so Russia has banned Facebook, and, or Meta, you know, which is the parent company now, for being an extremist organization. Hmm, pot, this is kettle. All right, so we're joined by CEO and co-founder of Free Space Social, John D. Willis, which is actually the alternative to Facebook. Uh, John, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Carl. Thanks for having me. All right, so um, Facebook. They're, uh, they're obviously a global force with billions of users everywhere. Russia's now blocked them, I mean, in the bastion of free speech, I guess. But what, is he, what do you make of the fact that Putin is trying to stop his people from communicating based on the fact that Facebook is an extremist organization? Well, he's calling them an extremist organization because Facebook changed their rules over a week or two ago, basically allowing for death threats to be made against Putin and Russian soldiers. Mm -hmm. And so Putin decided to... To clamp down on that because, you know, whether you agree with Putin or not, I, I don't know, I'm not going to take a stance on this, but when it comes to that type of activity that Facebook's allowing, I have to agree with Putin's, uh, his uh, decision to, to clamp down on that because any social media platform that's out there stating that they are, are totally for killing of soldiers or world leaders that's not that's not right. And yeah. uh, so Putin decided to do that. But when it comes to them clamping down on communication, uh, the, the ban did not include WhatsApp. And WhatsApp, if I'm not mistaken, has 67 million users in Russia, wow. whereas as of last year, they only had about 7 million Facebook users. So WhatsApp is still allowed, but Facebook, they have banned all completely. And, and Facebook being banned, um, you know, it's a little ironic since they used to do all the banning and now, they, now they're starting to feel... Uh, what we've been feeling over all these years with all yeah. with the in band for being conservative or whatever. Well, John, let's dive into the fact that Facebook has been very openly, uh, very open about its its terms of use, which means that you can't threaten violence, you can't do this. But they, did, like you said, they did open the doors and say, look, you know what, you can threaten Putin's life, and that's okay by our new rules of engagement. It, that just doesn't sit right with me, does it? It doesn't. I mean, and, and where's it going to stop? I mean, if uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually surprised that Facebook didn't do this policy change during the Trump administration, mm -hmm. because we all knew how they how they felt about him. And going forward, where's it where's it going to go? Um, it, it's OK to threaten Ron DeSantis's life or or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene or anybody that Facebook may not agree with. Yeah, go ahead and threaten their life. We don't care. Uh, because they don't fall in, they don't fall into line uh, with what we want. Yeah, they, they've made this entirely parallel universe where you can exist now in this metaverse. And how damaging is that to young kids growing up now that are able to live a virtual life and a real life? Do you think they, they cross over? Do you think it has any psychological long-term effects on the fact that a, a kid might not know how to exist in real life once once in the virtual world? Definitely. So, so the metaverse, or as I call it, fantasy land, mm -hmm. um, really damages uh, youth as they grow up. Because in these formative years, their brains are still developing. They're learning every single second of the day. And as what Facebook is trying to do is they're trying to create this alternative world where these kids can be anything that they want other than themselves. Right. And uh, the, Spielberg came out with a movie a few years ago called Ready Player One that really kind of shows what the, the adverse effects of this metaverse type of world can be. And, and these kids, they're going to be addicted. You know, it, it creates addictive behavior. It also gives uh, pedophiles and traffickers more access to these kids as a way to groom them, as they've been doing on social media for years, especially on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it, it just causes really, really bad behavior. And if you don't believe me, go watch uh, the Netflix a documentary called The Social Dilemma yeah. that really breaks down the adverse effects and negative effects of social right. media attention. Uh, John, real quick, I want to go into Section 230, the Communi Communications Decency Act. i got about 30 seconds for you to answer this and solve all the world's problems. But if they're selectively <laughs> allowing death threats or not allowing them based on where they believe they fall, does that eliminate 230 protections for them? Absolutely, because the Section 230... What that does is it creates uh, a protection for any liable post. So if someone posts a death threat, you can't go and sue Facebook because of that post. Right. Well, if Facebook is now allowing it, guess what? They're now a publisher instead of a platform, and they can be sued. So all those protections that were given by Congress are now out the window. The problem is, is that no one actually uh, holds Facebook accountable. And, and, and it's sad to say right. Putin's the first one that's actually, actually ever held them accountable. 
Um, I wish the United States would would do something because there's some very serious things that are going on with Facebook. And that's yeah. why we created free space. We don't we don't allow that stuff, but we do allow people to be themselves and uh, to, to actually have an opinion without fear of being censored or shadow banned. John D. Willis, free space is the Facebook alternative. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Carl. Have a great one. All right. Up next, Vladimir Putin continuing to flex Russia's military might on Ukraine. But